Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, Kevin and Larika here. This is our six month full-time anniversary. Six months? Yeah, we left back on May 25th and really started this full-time journey, living in the RV full-time. I can't believe it's been six months. It's crazy to me. Yep. But here we are, six months later, still living in our rig. <laughs> yep, loving every minute of it. Yeah, it's been such an adventure. It's been such a journey. We've said it several times. Uh, we're just blessed to be able to do this. And we're just living our dreams and, and traveling the country full time. So far, since we've been on the road, we did 11 states in about five and a half months. Yeah. It's been amazing. First off, before we kind of get going, we want to thank you guys. We want to thank everybody out there for supporting the channel for... You know, for YouTube, all our subscribers, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all the likes and follows and everything else. The comments. Yes, the comments are getting, amazing. You know, to answer those and get to know you guys a little bit too. So we appreciate it. We we appreciate all of your support. We never imagined six months ago that our little channel would have blown up the way it did. <laughs> um, we kind of went from a few hundred followers to over a thousand to over two thousand just in a few months which I know for some of the big channels out there may not sound like a lot, but for us, it means the world to us. So oh, it's it, very humbling. Yes. I know what it's like because we watch channels that we love and you feel so connected. And so I'm humbled by it mm -hmm. and just so thankful that, you know, if there's any bit of what we experience that speaks to you, because I know the channels that have spoken to us and right. where we've, you know, well, we can't wait to RV. So it's it's humbling and it's just, we're just grateful to you guys for your support and we thank you so much for watching. So for the last several weeks to a month or so, we put out there that we we're going to do this uh, Q&A and to send us your questions. We've got a bunch of good questions from you guys, so we're just going to jump right into it and <laughs> answer them the best we can. Well. So a question that we've actually been asked several times, both in person and and online is, what about Chris and Diane? You know, we don't see them a whole lot on the videos anymore. Are uh, which... you guys still friends? Are you yeah. still traveling together? Yes. <laughs> yes. Chris and Diane and Kevin and I still all travel together. Mm -hmm. At least we did until we had to leave Oregon <laughs> due to our emergency uh, that you yes. saw in last week's video. Uh, we left them yes. in Oregon and we had to come home to deal with our kid. We did. We did. The easy answer to this is... Yes, we are still friends. Yes, we still travel together. Absolutely. Yes, we are still going strong that way. So basically the reason you guys don't see them on the channel as much is because we record ourselves and Diane and Chris record themselves. Kevin does most of the recording as far as group things go. So that's why a lot of times when it's all four of us, it's because Kevin's got the camera going. They just are, don't record as much and that's okay. We just happen to record all the time. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> And so that is where we're at. Everything is great. We still yeah. travel. We still see them. They are dear friends and none of that has changed. So. so the next question was internet service. And I imagine that solves TV service too. So what I'm assuming is how do we get internet service? How do we get TV? We have Starlink and we also have a T-Mobile at home box as well. And we utilize both of those. Now, a lot of people at different campgrounds have even asked me, oh, you have Starlink, what channels do you get? So for those of you guys that aren't familiar with it, Starlink is your internet provider. Our television service comes from YouTube TV, and we use that to get all of our local channels from our home base area, as well as all of the cable channels. And I would say for the last six months, it has worked out oh, yes. very good. So. If Starlink is acting up, which it really, we haven't been in many places that it has, uh, the T-Mobile will take over. I think where it's been handy to have the T-Mobile is at our Harvest Host, our one night stays when we're trying to get from one place to another and mm -hmm. we just need a night. You don't have to take out all of your Starlink. We just connect to the T-Mobile mm -hmm. and it is very efficient and we're good right. for the one night. Except for the night that I had to watch the Diamondbacks sweep the Dodgers. <laughs> I hooked up the Starlink that for that. That is true. That is true. So. With your current experience, are there things that you would harden or upgrade knowing it's not quite up to travel vibrations? I don't know that you would know to upgrade a bunch of stuff no. prior to moving your rig. So basically like balance is falling or clot, like as you've seen some of our videos um, where their closet fell and just different experiences. 
you you don't always know to do that and I don't know that you need to reinforce it until it does. I think in RV land, you are constantly repairing mm -hmm. the things that fall apart for you and they're different to everybody. Not everybody has the same issues with their rig and you don't travel on the same roads and sometimes you'll travel mm -hmm. on a road and somebody else travel on a road and it happens to their rig and not your rig. So to me, it's almost like it has to happen mm -hmm. and then you find it's like the problem and then you find the solution for it. And right. so as we are moving and we're, we're doing this life, you, you go through them mm -hmm. and you fix them. Yeah. Now on the outside, I think it's different because you have right. said that if you could do it over when we ordered our rig, you would have gotten, I would have gotten the independent suspension mm -hmm. and disc brakes, uh, from the factory. I would have ordered those day one if I had to do it all over again. Mm -hmm. So if I had to do it all over again, that would probably be my number one upgrade straight from the factory. So how long could you go on your generator and your holding tanks not having hookups? Everybody's different. Everybody RV is different. Everybody has different styles. Um, a lot of it also depends on where are you. You know, when we were driving back from Oregon, like I said in those videos, I wanted to make sure I had uh, at least power hookups every night because the temperature was dropping into the 30s and we needed our heaters mm -hmm. to run. And with our current setup with just the two uh, lithium batteries without the expanded inverters and converters and all of that stuff, I wasn't comfortable just running our space heaters just on the batteries. If you've got a full solar package, and you've got a full inverter and you've got a full converter kit that runs all of your, not only 12 volts, but all of your DC as well. Yeah, it, you may be able to go, you know, without a generator. And then as far as the holding tanks. I mean, that is completely that on is, how you, if yeah. you conserve water, how do you take showers? How do you do mm -hmm. dishes? Yeah. Do you use paper? Do you, you know, when yeah. you're trying to conserve? So it depends on what your usage is. I mean, we've uh, actually how talked- How long you can go. I mean, I've actually talked to people where they may not flush the toilet after every use to conserve water. We kind of abide by the, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down policy. Whoops, forgot my own rule. I think too, just, yeah. it, it just depends. Like a lot of people will go into that conservation mode. Right. And so it's like not using real dishes mm -hmm. and not, you mm -hmm. know, because then you don't have to use your water as much when you're trying to conserve it. Right. So it depends on how you live. Even with full hookups, we only dump the gray every four to five days in the black, maybe once a week at the most. So we probably could go three or four days. Mm -hmm. But um, if we were super like conscious of what we were doing, yeah. we could go longer for sure. Right. So you get a little spoiled when you're on full hookups mm -hmm. because you know that you can just dump. And yeah. so, um, and most of our RV travel the last six months has been on full hookups. Yeah. So we're a little spoiled that way. Versus our shakedowns and our initial starting out on the road, I, I, I feel like you and I both thought we couldn't go as long. Right. And we've learned as yeah. we've now approached six months of doing this, oh, we can go a lot longer than we think. Like you start to look at the sensors and you're like, oh, we're at 67. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. You can go a lot longer than you think. And yeah. I remember thinking we have to empty soon. But it, it, it's those sensors are so funny because anything can trigger them and yeah. they tend to go up quicker than the, your tank is actually filling. So Absolutely. Um, you just take everything, you know, with a grain of salt, you will learn your own rig. It's right. crazy. People used to tell us that all the time. You'll know exactly what you can do. And now I get it because mm -hmm. you you get that down. You're like, oh, I can do this. You, you completely learn yep. how your rig works and how you use it. So would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It's all experience. Yep. Somebody asked, somebody asked if you could put solar packages on RVs. Yes, absolutely. We'd uh, love to do that someday. Yes. We don't have one. And we are not there yet. <laughs> Google it. Baby steps. Yeah. Google <laughs> solar packages. Yes. You can put solar packages on these rigs. We've got some good friends of ours that can be off grid for weeks at a time mm -hmm. with their solar package. So. The bigger solar package, the longer you want to be off grid, the more money it costs, like everything in this world. So I would do a little research on that. We have no solar, so no. that's pretty much all I can tell you about I think it. Most people that go into it want to eventually do solar, so you can have the option of mm -hmm. doing both. But I think it is important. I, I love the channels that promote baby steps. Yes. Because I don't think you have to get on the road and do everything. 
Right. I think that you can do things in baby steps and you mm -hmm. can do things geared towards what works best for you. So don't let not having the money to do solar or the lithium batteries, any of that kind of stuff, any of the upgrades, don't let that deter you from mm -hmm. getting on the road because I think it's initially, the best thing you'll ever do is just get on the road. Mm -hmm. And then you'll learn to adapt and what you want to maybe upgrade or put money into. Right. Um, and I think it's super smart to remember to take baby steps. Absolutely. You don't have to have it all to have it all. That's why so much of RV living is geared towards the way that you live. Absolutely. We see people so. in RVs and, you know, some of these small travel trailers and I'm like, I couldn't do it. But Van other people, life? other people look at ours and they, they think it's ridiculous. Yeah, they talk to us here and they go, I can never do something that big. Yeah. I couldn't handle it. So yeah. everybody's different. You know, how you live. That's the beauty of it though, yeah. because in life, that's it. You mm -hmm. have all different personalities and different things. And so whatever works for you, whatever it takes to get you on the road to experience the things you want to experience. Mm -hmm. We talk about that all the time on the channel. Yeah. Our, there's all different kinds of RVers. None of them are wrong because everybody's right because you're doing what you need to do to right. get out there and experience life and do this life the best that you can do all right next question washer and dryer in your rv <laughs> we have had a lot of the, on this because yeah. so many people are like why didn't you opt you know to get the washer and dryer before we chose our rig like before we even bought it we were still narrowing down all of the different rigs and which one we wanted we had done a ton of research on the washer and dryer uh, controversy <laughs> and it's funny because we were talking to our sales guy and he was giving us the pros and cons and we'd watched several channels and done the research um, the the main reason we did not get a washer and dryer was because we compared the cost of it and the size of it mm -hmm. and what it would take to actually do loads and it just wasn't worth it the washer and dryers are quite small and they take a long time to do loads and mm -hmm. they use a lot of water and so we had said that we were not going to get them because we would try doing the laundry that's in the sure. uh, campgrounds and then also or you can go to laundromats and honestly it has not been bad at all no. it's been quite easy they most of the places we've stayed at have fantastic laundry it's affordable it's very doable and we have gone to a laundromat before. Mm -hmm. But the other great thing about not doing the washer dryer is we have the hookups. So if we ever change our mind, we can do that. But for now, we get extra storage. A whole nother closet. <laughs> Which is, is fantastic. So we're able to put things in there. But if we changed our mind or down the road, they came out with, you know, better models mm -hmm. that where they were more efficient and all that, then we would do it. And Does your dually setup offer significant advantages over a single rear wheel setup on 100%. your pickup truck? One hundred percent. Absolutely. For us. Yes, and for the weight and for the size of this <laughs> RV, <laughs> we so, have a very large RV. This yeah. RV, the twenty twenty two Vanley Beacon, it's forty two and a half feet long. It is eighteen thousand pounds fully loaded. My Ford F three fifty dually is eight feet six inches wide with the dually tires closed up driving down the road this rv is eight feet six inches wide therefore the truck and the rv are the same width driving down the road a lot better stability a single rear wheel setup your truck is narrower than your rv and you have a little more wind resistance and you get a little more uh, wobble in there apparently i've never pulled something this big without a dually so from what I've been told from other people, you do get a little more sway because you lose some aerodynamics because your RV is sticking out past your truck. Number two, I know when I'm driving through a construction zone, if the truck makes it, the RV makes it. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, yes, it's a very big advantage. And then obviously you start getting into gross vehicle weight ratings oh, on eight. dualies. Uh, tow capacities and things like that. And again, every single uh, truck is different. Every single setup is different. And I have the Lariat, but the Platinum has more options, which reduces your capacity. So every single vehicle, every single truck you look at has different numbers and you have to make sure you look at that sticker to figure out what your capacity is. Pretty much across the board, if you have a dually truck, you can tow a 42 to 45 foot uh, fifth wheel without without problem. That's funny. When we picked up the rig mm -hmm. to take it home, um, our salesman was like, "Go ahead and get your truck, 
I hope you have a big enough truck to take this. Yeah. And when he saw the truck, he was like, oh, you came prepared. But he he did not feel comfortable giving it to somebody that wasn't. He told me if we didn't have a dually, he wasn't going to let me drive off the lot. Yeah. So just interesting. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for us and the size of our rig, definitely. Yes. Do you have or are you entertaining another mode of transportation besides your truck? <laughs> Mountain bikes, mini bikes, e bikes, uh -huh. or Razor ATV side by side, um, things like that. Um, we don't have any toys because we, this is not a toy hauler. So the ATVs, Razors are out of the question. We don't ride motorcycles. I have never driven a motorcycle in my life. And at 52 years old, I'm not starting now. We don't have bikes. Not yet. We've always talked about getting bikes. Yes. Bikes or e bikes. So. Would it be practical or possible to take kayaks with you, either underneath or on the roof? Kayaks is something else that we have been talking about wanting mm -hmm. to get. Um, with our setup, we would probably go with the inflatable kayaks or inflatable stand-up paddle boards. Even though we do, our rig could technically hold uh, full kayaks underneath there, but we would have to dedicate a lot of our storage to that. Right. And so we are going to more than likely go with inflatable ones because mm -hmm. we need that. Like I said, we're, we're, we have all of our stuff under there. Um, so we definitely will do that down the road. I'm sure we've right. talked about it and, and, and more than likely they will be inflatable. Yeah. There, we've actually seen other channels that have full size fifth wheels and trucks, and they actually have a roof rack yeah. for regular hard plastic kayaks. Um, so they are out there. So it is possible to put hard plastic kayaks on the roof of the truck yep. and then tow the RV. Um, you can't put anything on the roof of the RV um, <laughs> for because of height and yeah. things like that. But hard plastic ones, it is possible. However, we will probably go with the inflatable ones. That's what it's looking like. If it changes, you'll be the first to know. We yes. love questions like this, you know, because we're so new, but people are asking us our advice on things. <laughs> we're in the planning stages of going full time. Being away from kids and grandkids is the only thing that I'm not looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Is it getting easier? Yes and no. Yes. <laughs> and yes no. and no. That's a fair question. And yes. it's, it's always going to be a struggle. So the, the great part is with modern technology and mm -hmm. phones and FaceTime and all that good stuff, you can always be connected. I realize it is not the same. And mm -hmm. obviously, since COVID, people want to be connected all the time. Mm -hmm. We do really well with our boys. Um, they're adults. They're adults. Again, like us coming home just a month early because of something, it's a big deal. Like right. you, we're still there for our son, even though he's an adult, he's still mm -hmm. our child. So it does get easier, but it doesn't. So for me, right. I know my kids are good. They're independent. They're doing their thing. Um, but you miss seeing them and you always will. I miss seeing my family, you know, my sisters and my mom mm -hmm. and, and my cousins are together and I, and I'm like, Oh, I want to be there. Sometimes that's heartbreaking, yeah. but my brother-in-law texted me on labor day <laughs> and the entire family was over to his house for a pool party barbecue. Mm -hmm. And he texted me and he's like, dude, it's so weird having a family get together and you're not here. Yeah. Which, so yeah. those don't always get easier, but at the same time, the experiences that you have mm -hmm. getting out there and living life and doing things together that we've dreamed, we've, mm -hmm. we've dreamt about and, and knowing the freedom in that, but also being able to come back for those yeah. good things and be there for your kids if they need them and then also connect with them. It's important for us to be home for the holidays. And so that's why we make it a point to be back at our home state to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like we've come back early because of what happened with Hayden. And it's actually been a blessing because we have had so much family time that it filled your cup for that time. And so when we are able to take off again, we will be filled yep. and replenished. And oh. well, then just reconnecting with your friends too, yep. you know, like, so that's been important too. So there, you just, you need to know you and you need to fill up when you need to fill up. Mm -hmm. It's also amazing to get out on the road. When we got the phone call that Hayden needed surgery, uh, like we said in last week's video, four days. <laughs> we were here in our home with our RV. We we're back in four days. Yeah. It'd be a little different if we were somewhere else, but then it would have been we, six days. But you just, but but you also just make it. You, and that's the, that's the beauty of this mm -hmm. lifestyle. So, you can be there for those. You're not there for every single thing, but at the same time, you just, you know what you can do. Right. Knowing that Van Lee has discontinued production, would you still buy a beacon? <laughs> it's a good question. 
We've heard that a lot. Yeah. In he, the parks, people will walk by and they'll be like, oh, we love your rig, but what are you going to do now? The Van Lee, you know, discontinued them. Our Van Lee Beacon is a product of Tiffin. Tiffin is amazing. Yeah. It's their fifth wheel. Yeah. It's, it's basically a Tiffin mm -hmm. fifth wheel. Anything and all the Van Lee thing, I've had to call and get a couple little things uh, as far as parts are concerned. You call Tiffin and they just take great good care of you. So to answer your question, yeah. I would have bought the Beacon again. Yeah, we still would buy the Beacon. and Love it. We do. We don't have any regrets with our rig, and we don't... Uh, I, I we, we kind of compared everything to this yes. for us. So that's how we ended up with this rig, is mm -hmm. we fell in love with it, and then we... Um, Spent a year. <laughs> and just much. comparing every other rig and doing pros and cons and, and to make the decision to finally this was going to be what we wanted. So, no, we would definitely still do the Beacon. This is our home? Yep. <laughs> this was very interesting. What is the one thing that has surprised you the most despite watching all of the YouTubers and doing research out there? It's a hard one. That's a very hard <laughs> one. I pondered on this one for weeks. Yeah. Because I just was like, how do you answer that? And I, I, think, I think they mean, like, you know, has anything shocked you? I think for me, the thing that <laughs> surprised me after years of watching everybody else's channels on YouTube and doing the research, how much I was going to love it. And okay. it's not that hard to get out and live this life. Um, I was nervous about towing a 42-foot um, RV, and that took a little practice and things like that. But as far as living in an RV, mm -hmm. um, living in, you know, basically 350 square feet, we talk about it all the time that I don't even feel sometimes that we're in an RV. This is home. You know, when we're out, we go somewhere else and that's, we come home. I wake up in the morning, we're home. I get my coffee, I get my breakfast. I think what surprised me is how much this was going to feel like home so quickly you know when you're looking at these rvs on the lots and in the shows and everything else they're pretty sterile and you sit there and you try to imagine yourself you sit in mm -hmm. your chairs like this you come in i don't know how many of these couches we've sat in and we're like all right could i live here and you start wondering about it and like well you know we did watch the youtubers you know they've done it you know things like that but i never realized how easy it would be to actually just live live life now i'm not saying that this life is completely easy <laughs> things go wrong and we yeah. have issues and and things like that. And you've got your repairs. Anybody in an RV knows. You have to have realistic expectations. Yes. The thing that surprised me is how much it feels like home. I think for me, the thing that has surprised me the most is how much I have enjoyed being more minimal. We've been very honest with our whole journey doing this. And Kevin and I, we just went all in. We just did it all. And yeah. we we got rid of so much stuff. And yeah. when you're in the process of doing it, people would ask me all the time, well, aren't you scared? Aren't you, you look like you're so calm. Aren't you freaking out? Oh, we freaked out. Oh yeah, there were some. And, and when I was packing up our big house and then we went into the rental, absolutely. But gosh, purging and, and getting rid of things that you don't need through your whole life, it's just stuff sometimes. And so, like the purging felt so good, but it almost leads into just this amazing gift that we get good. because I do, I do consider it a gift. We are just so blessed to be able to do it in a time mm -hmm. in this country where people can't even afford to do anything, Right. you know, and we are seeing just amazing things and we're doing it with everything we own with us except for our storage. So I don't want to, you know, yeah. lie that. We did save some stuff in our one storage. But for the most part, everything we own is with us and it's so much more simple. Mm -hmm. And you go through life, you see what God has put out there and you just can't help but feel so blessed because I we would have never seen half the things we see. Oh, no. And we're not even remotely we haven't even scratched the surface. We wouldn't have been able to meet pe the people that we've been able to meet and build communities. We did it all without having a bunch of stuff that we thought we needed. Right. And so, and that's the thing is we go through life collecting so much stuff. And I think it's amazing to save those important things. It's just been so freeing. And, and it's why we named the rig Freedom because there is so much freedom in it. Right. In what we're doing. And so I remember just thinking, am I going to be able to do this? That first day was weird. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. That first day, leaving the house, 
driving over to the storage slot to pick up the RV, finished loading it up, and we drove away, checked out of the storage lot and said, we're done, we're not coming back. That was weird. Yeah. And then our first night in the RV, we set up, we went to Walmart, did a bunch of shopping, stocked up all the groceries. If you haven't seen that video, we'll put it right here for you. <laughs> we were living life. Yeah. It takes a little bit of an adjustment period because you you almost feel like vacation mode, especially mm -hmm. if you've done shakedowns because you get so excited for your shakedowns. Right. But gosh, living it is 10 times better because you don't have to pack and unpack. <laughs> but I don't want to stray away from the question. Basically, right. that's what shocked me yeah. is how being more minimal mm -hmm. in this life is so much more fulfilling and it makes you appreciate the the little things but actually the little things are quite grand i'm looking at our pictures they're all free right. like you just get to go and look at them with your own eyes and experience it and there's the sounds and the smells we talk about it all the time on this channel the sounds the smells the the oh, glorious wow. colors that you can see for me there's always hesitation because it's change and right. we're in a world where it's like work 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 mm -hmm. money 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 and when you decide to go a little bit more minimal and you just focus on the things that are important it's amazing it's yep. life changing so and I I had a feeling but you have to get over like that fear of giving up stuff right. to gain the uh, important right. stuff so. all right last question and not only did we get it on our comments and DMs. I think everybody in our family has asked us this question. Well, they're excited. I, yeah. I you think, come back and you reunite with your friends and your family right? and that's what they want to know. And people in the RV parks, when you start talking about where, the same way. Uh, different things, <laughs> where's the one place that you want to go back to and what's your favorite place that you've been to? And I think it's so hilarious because I remember we pulled into South Dakota mm -hmm. and we started exploring there and it was, we were there for 16 days and I just couldn't get enough. And I was like, oh, this by far is my favorite. Yeah. And we both kind of agreed and it was amazing. But then we went to Montana and it was amazing. It just keeps getting better. But I think for me, I want to go back to the Grand Tetons. I want to go back to Oregon for me so far. And I need to stress specifically at this point, because we haven't gone in, but the coast of Oregon. Um, my favorite has been Oregon. And because I love the color green, I love the beach, I love the forest, and I love the trees. And so for me, it's just enchanting. And I, I didn't do enough and I could always go back and do more. And to me, it's the best of both worlds. Definitely for me right now, it's Oregon. Although it's so hard for me to pinpoint that because I loved everything. I loved Yellowstone. I, lo I loved it all. So far, my favorite has got to be Custer, South Dakota. Um, like Larika just too. said, we were there for 16 days. And the thing is, outside of the monuments and all of the the big places that everybody sees when they go to South Dakota, just being in Custer State Park, driving the wildlife loop and iron mountain road mm -hmm. every time we probably did both of those places three or four times while we were there it's like you couldn't get enough and every time you go you see something different between Agreed. what wildlife is out there and you notice little different things and everything and it's also the kind of place that if you have nothing scheduled to do you just go to the park and it's just incredible. Well, we've talked about that, going and finding right. things. So yeah, you just so for mm -hmm. me, that was the place where every single day we had something to do, and every single place we could go do something without spending a ton of money, without driving, you know, too darn far. Yeah. Because from our RV park at Big Pine to the entrance to Custer State Park was only not even ten miles, mm -hmm. maybe it was even five miles. But I would say so far that my favorite was Custer State Park, but where do I want to go back before <laughs> anything else? The Oregon coast. And so we agree on that and we will. Right. But here's the other thing that goes along with it. You start getting out to all these places and you, you plan them or you don't plan them, but you all you arrive at a certain time. Then what your mind starts doing is going, I think it would be cool to go to these places at a different time of year than we did it. So like, for example, Custer State Park, we were there at the end of August into September and I've heard that it's amazing going like in the spring because all of the um, wildlife is having their babies right? and you see a ton of, you know, babies. And so it, then you start doing that. Oh, I'd like to see the Oregon coast when the haystack has green all over it, you know, in the spring or the summer. It, it's just so funny because I feel like every single place that we've gone to, I would definitely do again. Absolutely. And that's one reason why on our videos, we always put the date 
at the bottom of the video so you know what time of year we were there. Yes. We spent so much time watching other, other YouTube videos and amazing scenery. Drove me nuts. What time of year are they there? <laughs> I DM or yeah. comment, hey, what time of year were you there? You know, what month was yes. it? Give me a ballpark of what time frame you were there. I may want to go during that time because of <coughs> the pictures and the video that you've shown. It just looks absolutely amazing. So for us, that's why we said from the beginning, Huge. when we decided to start this YouTube channel, we're going to put the dates on all of our videos and all of the big things we're doing. So if any of you are interested, you see the weather, what it was like for us in Oregon, yeah. and you say, I want to go during that time, you know that was the beginning of mm -hmm. October. It was important to me. It drove mm -hmm. me insane. I loved the YouTube <laughs> channels, but I told Kevin when he came to me with this crazy idea for a YouTube channel, <laughs> I said... If we do this, you have got to date our stuff yep. because I it is so important for me to know what time of year it is yep. when when we're watching the adventures. So that's why we try to do that for you guys because mm -hmm. uh, then you know. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much all the questions we've been talking for a while. We really do. We want to thank you guys for being supportive to our channel and helping us grow. Um, if you haven't yet already, subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button down below in the bell. And also our Facebook and our Instagram. Do us a favor if you haven't, subscribe and like and follow us on those platforms as well. Because there's a lot of times I'll put pictures and different things that we're doing on those that just don't make the video cut because the videos are only so long. You can leave us a comment. Yes, please we'll leave us a comment. Back, so. Yeah, it's been good. We're, we're, like I said, we're blessed and we're so grateful and uh, mm -hmm. we thank you. It's been an amazing six months and yep. uh, I'm excited for the future. You bet. So, All right, guys. Bye-bye. Okay.